Hey, 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 everybody. It is I, Hope Giselle, and I am back with the first episode of season three of Can We Talk with my special guest, none other than the infamous Mr. Dadrick Hall. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, darling. Look, look, we've done this before, yes. and I'd like to think that it was a beautiful interview. Yes, of course. How and so ever. Some of you all will never see it. Um, my Patreon people, y'all know, y'all already know the tea. Y'all have already gotten the first set of tea. So if you're listening to this or if you're watching this this time, just know y'all missed a bunch of tea. It was really dope. It was really emotional, but it was also very lame and not us. Yeah. So um, it was getting very scripted. Very Diane Sawyer. Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it was giving Diane Sawyer. <laughs> so with that being said. This is, is the, the interview, right? This is the space where we're going to have the conversation. Okay. And I, I think I just want to like jump right into the things and be like, are you paying the dancers or not? <laughs> um, I think that that is a complicated question like most things. I'm glad that you just have asked me. I wish more people would do that. I have done 700 videos and sometimes the dancers get paid sometimes they don't i never tell people that they are going to get paid and then they don't get paid right. there have been jobs that from the beginning we're like this is a, a passion project case in point the video we did with brandy mm -hmm. i was like if you want to be in this video if you liked brandy and cinderella as much as i did come and be a part of it um but if it's a live show my tour dancers they get paid and they work so hard i was a dancer first i grew up as a dancer i've been a dancer my whole life so um, I don't ever want to disrespect the dance community by not paying people. It's just, I'm an independent artist, which a lot of people don't know. People think that I'm signed. Did you know that? I knew that you were independent, but explain what that means. Cause I, I don't think a lot of people understand what that means. An independent artist is like a, a like, I would say if you are not independent, you have a record label, which means if you decide to do a video, oftentimes the record label will pay for it or they'll at the very least give you an advance. They would be paying the dancers, they'd hire the producers, the choreographers, whatever. When you're independent, all of those resources go away. I choreograph, produce, direct, costume, do everything for my own videos on top of starring in them. And I write all my own songs. I put them out on my own. They're not distributed by label. I don't have help getting the word out about my music. Mm -hmm. It's all organic growth. And sometimes when you're doing something, you could think it's the next Bob Tisha and it could just, it's it flop. could be a Bob Tisha. It's a Bob Tisha. It's, 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 it's very messed up. We're not listening. We don't like that. Yeah. So every single time you do something, it's a huge risk. It's a huge risk for any artist, but most artists, it's not their own financial risk because the label is going in on that joint venture together. Or sometimes they'll pay for some of the video, not the full video, but okay. with me, I fund you, every single so, video okay. and there's been 700 of them. So we've seen that and a large part of the reason why a lot of us are asking this question is because we've had dancers that have come out and said like, I'm not, I haven't been, I don't get, like I've worked on several projects because I love, but also my money is not coming through. And so is there a backstory that you can give about those specific things like are those? I only know of one person okay. that came out and said that and that was one of the dancers from Nails Her Hips Heels. Mm -hmm. And that video I gave Jay Count saying I can give you the receipts as well. We gave an email telling everyone this is a non-paid gig. If you want to come out and do this, this is my first single that I was doing that wasn't a part of a musical album. It was just an exciting thing for me to do. I honestly put the post up thinking we would get maybe 10, 20 dancers. I didn't ever think that 75 people were going to come. That was already a huge like task and like a huge um, ambitious goal for me to, to pay to costume 75 dancers, but I wanted everybody to be a part of it. There was no way that I was going to be able to give them a, 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 a fee of substance at that point. And it was just more for fun. It just happened to be the one video that, that blew was, up. Was about that. And now looking back at it, I'm like, okay, that blew up and was huge, which is why that's the video that specifically people talk about. But the, all, those dancers knew that they weren't going to get paid. It was said in, in, in an email and all of them knew. And um, there were 75 people and 75 people have not come forward and said, he didn't pay me. They're like, we knew we weren't getting paid. 
It was a fun experience. We had a good time doing it. Fun. That's what I think the general consensus would be of people doing. So it was video. given like Nicole Scherzinger, Pussycat Doll arrangement. Like you knew that y'all was ooh and on and dancing, <laughs> and then, right? Like y'all, y'all knew. It was just I think a lot of the people were people who had done stuff for me before that were like, I know that Todrick pays us for some gigs. Right. Does it? But which, by the way, I feel like Beyonce when she's like, I'm not the first person who has lip sang the national anthem or who has sang along with a pre-recorded track. It's very common, but. It is very common for people to do a video with like a, a flash mob or something for artists to have right. certain videos that pay, certain videos that don't pay, or certain videos it's a stipend, or certain videos it's like, I'll get you the next time, or if this mm -hmm. gets to this level, if then this picks up, right. then whatever. There's different arrangements that you can make, and for that video, the specific arrangement was, it's for exposure, for the experience. A lot of those people were like 19 years old, their parents flew them into town because they wanted to be in their first music video, or. They were like, I work as a, a receptionist for dentists, <laughs> and I really, like, I used to do my thing. I did not want to make that my right. priority focus. This is not my main job, my main source of income. I just also can dance and like to dance, and I want to be a part of the video. And I think that everybody should have the right to do that. I wish I had a billion dollars to just be able to pay everybody, like, whatever, to come to the video. But that was not the case for that specific video. Okay. And so jumping right into the next question, a lot of people have speculations about why that was. Like, so the people that love Todrick are like, I mean, but it's probably because you are on some, I like him and he didn't like you back. So jumping right into it, are you fucking dancers? Cause that's like another. I didn't know that that was like a part of the narrative mm -hmm. that, that people think. Um, I, I have not been I don't like to say that word. Right. Because my mom like, might be watching this. Right. I do say that word, but, but not, not if Brenda not, is here watching. Not Brenda. Um, right. I that that's a always a difficult question. I have never had sex with a person who was my dancer and then I went into an intimate relationship okay. with them. I have been dating people before and my fans fell in love with that relationship that we have and I, I was like, come on tour and then obviously we continued to have our intimate relationship right. when they came on tour. But I've never hired somebody for the purpose of trying to use my power to, to then cross that line with them. So no Harvey Weinstein in. No, no, okay. no. I'm not, I, to be honest, I'm not a very, you know this about yes. me, I'm not a very like sexual, sexual person. <laughs> so even when I am in a relationship, they're like, Todrick, hello, like, what's going on? He's um, lying, y'all. He lying. No, I'm just saying, he lying. I, I wish that I've was the case, the you know? I've been in the room. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I have dated people and I think that just in general, like, I think that this journey can be a really lonely one for like artists. Like, I think there's nothing more incredible than going overseas and selling out a show in Paris or, um, London or Manchester or Melbourne, Sydney. Right. But it's a strange thing when you have all these people screaming for you, you do the meet and greet and then you go back and sit in your hotel and it's By just dead silence. And a lot of people have talked about this. It's a very lonely feeling. So when there have been people that I've dated who are performers, because a lot of the people that I date are people that I meet doing other shows or they're dancers or whatever. Um, it, it Those have been my favorite experiences when I can go home and go into the hotel and cuddle with a dancer that experienced the night with me and we can kiki about like, oh my God, and did you see when this happened? This mm -hmm. person didn't make her costume change. I love moments like that. And so that has happened on a couple of the tours, but it was people that I had a pre-existing relationship before they were ever cast. Okay. So I think the hardest part of this conversation, which shouldn't be, you know, but now that we're you talking look beautiful about, right now. I'll be trying. Y'all like it. For the people that can When see you just me. said, but shouldn't be, it gave me very Beyonce vibes. I like mean, the way you said it, the inflection. Training. My media training. The mannerisms. You know, it's put me in a space where. It was giving me very, I mean, very Beyonce. At least Jay Nova. It was it, giving me. Right. Like, very much so, Jay. Jay Nova Jay. as Beyonce. I love you, Jay. Um, okay. I'm a little bit nervous about what this next question is going to be. Um, because it's, I mean, but we have to go there because we can't have a Todd Hall interview that is the interview and not speak about it. And let me say this. I don't care how any of y'all feel about it or, or the, because I feel like I had to like also, there was a space where like, as I was preparing for this, the first time and, and this time where I was just like, I gassed myself up 
And I was just like, oh my God, this is the interview. Like, this is the Taja Call interview that everybody wants, right? And I don't care whether, like, whether you want to admit it or not, Taja is an international celebrity. Like, there are people in multiple countries on multiple continents that know exactly who you are, that know your shit. And, like, there are also people internationally and people with way more notoriety than myself that want these questions to be asked, right? And so it's one of those things where I, in prepping for this, I had to, like, remind myself, like, this is serious shit for a lot of people like there are people out here who are like finally somebody is having this conversation well I really want you to ask the questions that people that you feel people, people would want to ask. ask because a lot of times people have things to say about me and I'm like they would never ask me that in person I would give them the answer I'm not hiding from people people don't ask me to do interviews about stuff like this and mm. Um, I don't know what you're about to ask me, but I do know that there's it's, it, there's so much to uncover and I'm just a person like, I think that you had a certain perception of me before you met me. Definitely. And now you, you have told me several times, this is not what I thought this was, you uh -huh. know? And I think I have been guilty of doing that before. There have been people who I'm not gonna name that I was like, I just don't like that person. Mm -hmm. And deep down, there was a reason why I didn't like them that I think I had to uncover later. It's not anybody specifically, it's just artists that I was like, I just, I'm not feeling I don't that. like them. Yeah. And um, I have had the um, opportunity to meet almost every single one because that's how the universe works the person you're talking the most shit about you is the person that you right by and of course i'm like oh I they're so know. sweet so they're so nice you're so now nice. i just i feel so, so horrible mm -hmm. but to a lot of people i'm not human and they don't think i'm gonna see their comments and i think that like even when you say something like you're an international name or whatever that makes me like crawl into it's like, like a <laughs> right. I live in my room and I am a theater geek at heart like I love the Wizard of Oz I love Disney I love uh Beyonce I love in, you know like anything that is like in, in anything that is whimsical and Alice in Wonderland-esque and stuff I just grew up watching that stuff and so sometimes when I get into spaces where people are saying things to me I kind of clam up because I'm like I really don't think you know how authentically myself i'm being right now i just am a theater nerd and i understand that to some people they maybe they do say it maybe that's clear to right. people do you think it's clear to people i don't i think to half of the audience is very clear but i, I also burped. feel like sorry nah, I just burped. i'm sorry you're editing it off. really or i'm not editing this. or make it louder I, i'm probably going to make it louder. but don't let it be what it was because i if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and that I, wasn't I like the best burp that i had within me i feel like it was like a half-ass burp thank you i'm sorry have to try i will do better thank i will do better next, next time. time you deserve better than that i do continue as you were anyway but i do i feel <laughs> feel like and this is why we had to redo the interview because this we was tired as fuck the first time you had no voice i had no voice <laughs> I had, no, I had been screaming the night before. It was it was crazy. It was crazy that I had done the concert the night before. And, and I, I was had the one that was hoarse. Yeah, I was hoarse. Um, so, because I know the people listening are like, bitch, what is the question? Sorry, I'm so sorry. We're getting distracted. Right, we are. But, so the question is, do you genuinely not like black men? Is there a reason why you don't? date black men that's not the question i thought you were about to ask i don't even know what i thought the question what you was thought gonna, it was going i don't know what it was going to be but that's not where i thought you were going okay. um no that's not a thing i've dated so many black men in fact i exclusively dated black men when i first started dating just coming out of the closet and figuring out and exploring who i, I am but my life has been so specific and there are a lot of people who that i've dated especially when i lived in texas and when i moved to new york and when i first moved to la where I came out at 14 or 15 years old and I have never looked back and I've never been like apologetic about who it is that I am. But I have dated some people who are like, I'm not out to my family. I, I don't want that, that, I don't want this to be the way I'm put out or defined because you posting something of us is not just like another regular guy putting something out. So when I have dated people, white people and black people and a Puerto Rican guy that I dated, like sometimes, should I pause for the plane? Pause for the plane. Okay. Right, they're taking their time. They actually know we're pausing for, for, for said plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm cutting that out for the podcast people, but all of y'all on YouTube are gonna have to sit through that. So yeah, just, sorry about the, yeah, the just, plane. The plane. Okay. No disrespectful, yeah, that's very to be honest. It took a while. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I know that I have a reputation of dating um, white men, and I definitely love white men, but I love all kinds of men. I have like, since I was like in middle school, had like something for like Filipino, Asian men. I think it's because I watched Brandy in Cinderella for so long. Yes. Paolo Montalban yes. was like my yes. crush. I found out later in life that he does not play for our team, by the way. Spoiler alert. Is he, and, I thought he was. No, he's not gay. Oh. Mm -mm. Okay. But um, but I think that because I find myself in white spaces a lot, because I grew up doing ballet and doing theater, which usually is predominantly white people, I was the token black person in so many shows. And those, I don't go out to clubs, like people never see me out of clubs. I've never been on Grindr. I'm not really on dating apps. I'm on Tinder. When I can be on there, they kick me off of Tinder all the time. So if you see me on Tinder, it's probably me, you guys. Um, but um, yeah, I think that I'm a, a hopeless romantic. So like, if somebody comes at me with some, like, are you, trying. are you trying to, if they come with me with that, right. it's fucking over. If you, right. it's, I'm yours. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you look like, to, to be honest. It does matter, but. But it doesn't. Yeah, but if someone comes at me with something that is like sexual from the jump and like whatever, that's Turn just, off. it's not my vibe. Like, and I'm, I don't judge that for anybody who's doing that, but it, it's just, I am whoever I am to the core, just like as am a hopeless romantic and I love that. I, I don't do well with people who can't express themselves, who have walls up, who can't like be vulnerable with me. I don't need you to be cheesy and sappy every day, but it took me a long time to get to a place where I love myself and if somebody that I'm bringing into my life can't outwardly say that they love me, then it's just not romantic enough for me. I'm a person that wants to jump off the cliff with no... So are you saying, or, because what, I, cause what I'm trying to do is answer the questions that I think a lot of people are asking themselves in this moment. So are you saying that black men lack that capacity? I'm saying that the black men that I have dated, most of them have lacked that capacity. There have also been black men that I, that I loved and that I don't feel would there would have been any issue other than the fact that they, I don't think... It didn't seem like there was a time in the near future where they were gonna be comfortable enough with themselves to help me continue to be comfortable with myself. Cause this is a journey, like, and some of the people that I've dated have helped me be comfortable, like mm. wearing heels and dressing up and being out, you know, and proud about the things that I wanna do. Like, I, I still struggle with a lot of insecurities in that, which is crazy to say, like, cause I have videos out where I'm fully in drag, but it's a, it's a constant struggle and I, I need that person to like, help me reprogram the things that I think are problematic that I was taught my whole life. And in my experience, it's been the, the black men that I've dated, that has not been my experience. They they have not always been loyal, and, and neither have the white ones, by the way. But I have found that a lot of, a lot of the black men that I've dated have not been loyal very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, for real? <laughs> I wish we could like phone a friend right now so you could call them and talk to them. I would love to do that as like part of the exclusive that thing. Might be. I think that, that we, can, we, we should can do, do that. that. We should do that and Patreon. I wonder if they would answer. That would be interesting. And I think Patreon, y'all will get, if we do that Patreon, y'all will get it. I'm okay, we should do that after this yeah. just for fun. Just for fun, that'll be fun. Because I would want to know what they would say to you. And I think we're still cool. Like they still, the reason why I would say do it is because like, um, talk. A few people that I dated, um, you know, that were men of color came to this last concert that I did and they said a couple things like, I'm sorry that I did that to you, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it was really rough. So I think that when you go from an experience like that and then you go meet somebody, no matter what ethnicity that person is, and they like shower you with love and they're like vulnerable with you and they want to introduce you to their families, which opens up a whole different can of worms because I don't think it's our community's fault that sometimes we have difficulty like Doing bringing that. people home to our families because that's not, my, my own family doesn't like necessarily always, it's been a journey. My family's come a long way, but we have been taught 
you know, like I think there are some cultures, I, I'm trying to pick my words carefully, but there are some cultures, like a lot of people, you know, talk about Asian cultures and how like being gay is just, they don't, they don't fuck with it. Right. And, or in Jamaica, when people talk about going to Jamaica, it's not, I'm not it's, doing not, it. it's not safe mm -hmm. even. I'm not doing it. So it, it's a, it's a deep, dark rabbit hole that you go down when we start having this conversation because I can't blame them for that, but I can be in, in control of putting people around me that make me feel great. And, but that's not a white specific thing. It's not an Asian specific thing, a black specific thing. I'm an equal opportunist. If the booty is there, then that's, that's half the battle to it me. It was, so top or bottom. No, we can't be giving them that. Look here, for free. You, look here, you said it. And so I'm like, cause the kids are gonna ask. Cause you said booty. You didn't say All they need parts. to know is that I like big butts. And you and cannot, I lie. cannot. I can't. Can. Can. And I don't want you to. No, I couldn't. Okay. And if we're going to do the interview, I can't. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But so, so with that being. By I'm the way, by the, my ex boyfriends are like, it is crazy to me when I see them when people be like, mm. Tadra don't fuck with black dudes. And he's like, they're like, well, I know firsthand. First hand, I'm right. not going to say too much. But right. Like, I people know. are like, I know that they do. And, um, and, and um it's just yeah it's wild to read things like that about yourself online when i'm like people don't actually know this information and people people will go out and with their chest be like he doesn't date black men and i'm like i've only by the way posted that i know of two guys that i have dated like publicly been like this is my boyfriend um mm -hmm. that would be jesse and david I think the only reason that that one is tough is just because we do see an influx of white men on your page yeah. in lovey-dovey situations. And I think we're all guilty of like taking the picture for the sake of like pissing off an ex, making people feel or look a certain way, or honestly being more desirable because unfortunately we live in a society where like you're more desirable when people think that you are taken. And so um, I think where a lot of that confusion does come from, because even me, myself, like I want to call bullshit on that, but then when you say it the way that you say it, like, I've only posted two people where I've officially said, this is my man, like, this is my boyfriend. I can attest to that. I can agree with that. But there have definitely been some photos where I'm like, oh, I assume that they are dating, but you've never claimed. And the thing is, usually we're, we're just not. Y'all are just a not. friend. We've never hooked up. We've been, there have been so many people that are like, well, obviously you're dating him. I'm like... I don't even know if this man has a penis. I have mm. no idea. We have never hooked up. We are just friends. We shared a bond. We posted a picture. It was cute. I posted it. And that that was just my friend at that moment. I understand, though, why, like, when you're in, it's kind of weird because the industry casts a lot of people who are good looking white men in shows like if i'm doing yes. a production of hairspray they're gonna cast some guy who stereotypically by you know america's traditional outdated standards is is good looking but when i go into the room to put, be in a musical with this person like all that stuff like what ha is happening on the outside i don't really necessarily take into that much consideration if i have a genuine connection with the person that i'm meeting and it just happens to be that I'm on set oftentimes or in a show, in a musical, uh, on a commercial or, or doing a dance job or a job where a dancer is cast where the person is just like a, a guy that looks like someone that people would think that I would be dating. And um, we will start talking about the Wizard of Oz and they'll be like, oh my God, I have a Wizard of Oz room. And I'll be like, I have a Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I have never met another black guy who's like, I, I also have a Wizard, Wizard of Oz room. <laughs> I feel that. And, and so our similarities just like in those instances, like put me in a position where I'm like, I really fuck with you. And I, I don't, at that moment, I don't really care what somebody else who's not in the room thinks about the picture that I posted, you know what I mean? Okay. And I think maybe in hindsight, I should have cared more about the picture that was painting, but I, I've done a lot of musical theater and a lot of shows. And, I, and it, honestly, a bunch of the YouTubers that, are big and popular that we would be collaborating with and stuff are were like you know like little twinkie peter pan yeah, looking shane dawson and all the rest of those tyler the tyler, tyler oakley's yeah, the joey Graceffa, those, yeah. the, like the cory de soto even my mm -hmm. friend you know like a lot of the people that i was like collaborating with like back in the day which by the way i never collaborated with, with shane uh, yeah with, with just, shane or or tyler oakley we would just be at events and stuff together like, post okay. pictures and stuff and um I think that sometimes people would, you know, 
shit things. Yeah, and I don't think that there were a lot of black people who were probably even invited to be in those spaces. Like I would just remember seeing Glozell there or Day Storm or mm -hmm. Trey Melvin or whatever. And I love Trey and that's somebody that, well, you know. I know. <laughs> hey, Trey. <laughs> That moment is like a thing now. I, I, I really enjoy it. Hey, Andre. Hey, Andre. That was a great, those are great moments. Trey's hot. Trey is fucking amazingly, but Trey is also a flirt. Trey is a, he is. Trey is the biggest flirt that I ever But did. Trey has swag though. Trey like, a, like a different type of swag where he can make he you laugh, it. but also make you feel like you might want to get pregnant. No, for real. Mm -hmm. Like when, when I interviewed Trey, it was like the best interview in the world because, well, first of all, his voice by itself is just butter. The bass, the, 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 the Mufasa vibes. It very hits real. you in the back of wherever Ooh. you feel it. It hits you right, okay. right in the back of wherever you feel that at. Okay. And so, the, the, hey Trey. Hey, Trey. Hey. We love you. We love you. We stand, Madam Melvin. Indeed. Um, but with that being said, like, there's a space of accountability that I feel like has to be held over the way that things are being perceived. But then there's also, did you ever pay attention or were you not paying attention to the image that you were putting out because you didn't care? Or were you in a space where you felt like you were just living your life and then you looked up? and became a person where people cared more about the way that the image was being painted. I feel like it was the latter. I did get information and I did try to adjust those things. Like when people started talking about Beauty and the Beat and how this this is the message that we were putting out and the wrong people are laughing about it, I didn't disagree with that message. And so once I stopped seeing, once I started seeing those those comments, I was like, great, I need to pivot this. And you notice that I stopped making those type of videos, like the Hungry Games, the uh -huh. Mary Poppins and Pills, the Beauty and the Bee videos. Once I started seeing those comments, those videos ended and they never came back. Um, and then, you know, so, I would... really yeah. quick, why are they still up? Those videos are still up because I believe that, like, whenever, whenever, when we were in the room, I created that video with a bunch of black artists. Like it wasn't a video that I made with a bunch of white people to make stereotypical jokes towards black people. And I feel like I have a huge rainbow umbrella of content, 700 videos. I didn't think that there was anything in that video that was like, so like that moment that we made, like with, with 20 black people in the studio making these jokes and talking about stuff that we, we collaborated on that video. And also to be honest, there's a lot of those videos, there are people in those videos that are not alive anymore. Those were just like the friends of mine that we made that moment and whether that moment wasn't well received by everybody, there was a lot, we have a great time making it. And to me, I try not to do things unless it's something that is like clearly like, without dispute offensive to everybody like i think that for the same reason people don't like those videos people take issue with some of tyler perry's stuff and i think that tyler perry can evolve and change things but i don't think that he should be required to take down his art that he worked hard for and that he spent a lot of time on because there was artistry that went into it i mean we orchestrated music we sat down for hours and hours in the studio and i think when you make something that's like that that's art and it's like almost like a yearbook a scrapbook of experiences that you had and friends everything is nuanced it's like you think about the laughs and the times that you spent out and the sitting out and like we're eating church's chicken outside like there's there is a whole experience that you remember for every single video that you do. I'm sure you can understand that. Definitely. And when you're in the room, we've all been a part of situations where we're in a room and we're like- In that space, it was okay. In that space, it was okay. But out of context, someone seeing like it. it from the outside could be like, that was Bitch, whatever. <laughs> and also some things just don't age well, just in general. I don't think Britney Spears would put out a song called I'm a Slave for you right now. But in that moment, um, it was, is that too? Mm. No, I, but it's something that you don't even think I about. I don't think about because that. It, at that time it was like more appropriate. And as you can only be held accountable for being as conscious as society is in the moment that you're doing something. Something that we're gonna say right now in five years could be problematic. problematic yeah. I don't think you should take this video down. I think we should talk about how we were right now, and we should maybe address it and bring it and say like, oh, when we said that, we didn't mean for it to be appropriate. I don't know what we're saying right now that it that it won't be offensive, but in the room right now, there's energy that you feel, and you know what I mean. It's mm -hmm. it's it's hard to describe in a flat video on the internet that's 
pixelated over time because right. it was filmed on filmed on a shitty so, camera. Right. It's hard to describe what you feel. There's like the birds chirping, the water outside, the fireplace. Like no one's in this room in this moment sharing this energy with us. So they can say what they want on the outside and we can take it and try to like take the nuggets of like constructive criticism and use it to be better. But I think if you go back and apologize for things that you did in the past when you didn't know that they were a mistake, then that defeats the purpose of growth. humanity. Mm -hmm. Like that's the point of us being here is for you to do something. Someone say, I don't like that. It made me feel this way for you to say, great. You don't have to regret the fact that you did what you did you don't have to feel like you were a horrible person when you did that in the moment it was a decision that you made it's been seen by everyone now 20 million people have seen it all you can do is be better and i feel like i have done better in that regard and every single year i get more notes and more constructive criticism or more hate that i try to turn into constructive criticism to figure out how i'm gonna navigate and move forward while still trying to like be true to myself because there's millions of people chiming in telling you everything you can't take every note and you can't make everybody happy so i gotta try to like find that balance of like being true to myself being honest being open to constructive criticism being aware and not losing myself in this machine or not being so fake that i look at myself and feel like i'm unrecognizable to myself because that would be the biggest disappointment of all so how do you deal with those constructive criticisms? Because even in our newfound friendship, so we, we've been fostering this over like the past couple of months, right? But mm -hmm. only recently have, I think we had like this public display of affection for our friendship and, and where we are. Bitch, don't <laughs> start. Let me tell y'all something. This is, a, this is a moment of transparency. <laughs> For all of the butch queens out there and the trans girls and all of that stuff, like because I think that this is also going to be a cute little conversation because I don't think I've ever talked to you about this, but we can segue back. I get so nervous when you're saying because it's one of those things I hate it because I had this talk with my friend Obio, and love I'm always him. love Obio. Shouts out to Obio, but I don't. I have a horrible track record with gay men because I like men. Right? Well, I'm pansexual. I like everybody. But I lean towards masculinity and I don't give a fuck where it comes from. I don't give a fuck what you like. Right? And so I hate when attractive gay men be putting on because, bitch, I will fuck you for real. <laughs> like, I'm not playing. I will fuck you for real. Sorry, baby. Like, I, I love you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? We love you. I'm gonna have to cut that. We don't say the name. I don't say the name. So oh, cut that. Uh, he's pumpkin man. <laughs> he is pumpkin, pumpkin man. man. Pumpkin man. But I, baby, I love you. But like, that is like, and that's always been a thing. So even when like I met Obio before me and Pumpkin Man like kind of did a thing, and I remember Obio was like, he was like, "Hope you don't never want to spend time with me. You never want to call me. Like you never want to talk to me." And I was like, Obio, let me tell you something. You are sexy. Fine. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. And I know that you are being nice. And at this point in my life, I have learned and understood the difference between someone who is being nice and someone who is genuinely attracted to you. And I understand that you are genuinely being nice. You are being a gay brother to me. Mm. I can't take that. Cause you want to take me out on sister dates and I'm in my mind the entire night. I'm like, this might it. mean that. And what if, cause he can get it. So what if he's trying to tell me that he, he might, might want to get it. And, and, and that just doesn't serve me. And I feel like a lot of gay men like y'all don't understand that for a, a lot of the girls, y'all are our first boyfriends without the the, 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 the romance, right? But a lot of y'all are the first people to hold our doors open, to affirm our womanhood, to affirm like all of these things. Mm -hmm. And y'all be thinking like, it's cute. And we be like, no bitch, I, I kind of love you now. Like mm -hmm. I love you. And it's just like, I need for like PSA, like in real time, I need for gay men to understand that the girls, especially the newfound girls, like the baby trans girls, they may not be as mature as I am in this moment to be able to push you away and say, give me a couple of minutes to deal with myself and to understand that you are just being nice and that any thing that you say is a joke because then we run into the risk like, or we run into those spaces where like a lot of the boys are like, the girls are always trying to come on to us and that's why we can't be friends. And it's just like, but no, like there's nuance. So that, um, but with that, uh, what <laughs> it, it was the trade pose i'm sorry it's, it's, oh, this it's is not but it's uh, it, anyway 
I feel like I'm giving very posh gosh for gosh right now. It is. This this is cute. Like this is very this is giving cute. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm using some of these things. I know I'm gonna use some of these things for the clips. Um but some of the comments that I do get about you now that like I post things or like when we are seen together, like people say some of the meanest, nastiest things. And one of the things that I got today that really like hurt my feelings and bothered me was that somebody said, you know how he affects the community as a whole and the fact that you are hanging out with him is a problem. And until you stop hanging out with him, I'm no longer following you. And it was hurtful because this was somebody that I know has supported my dirty draws. Yeah. But then also I was like, what has he done that has impacted the community? And I'm assuming that this person was talking about the, the queer community in such a negative way that it was worth not supporting me the way that they have shown up and shown out for me in the past. And so one, have you ever gotten that comment that you've been harmful or hurtful towards the, the queer community specifically? And do you feel like you've ever, like, I know we can talk about the black community and how we feel about your blackness, but have queer people ever told you that you've just been harmful? I think that I get all kinds of comments and I don't know how I got to this point, to be completely honest. Um, I, I've never considered myself to be like a polarizing person. Oh. I don't feel that. I don't really claim that for myself when I'm on The mass Singer or something. People are just like, he's beloved in certain spaces. But if you go in certain other spaces, it's not that, that energy. Right. And I just feel like at some point on, along the line, like, whatever I've done to show my solidarity and to create music, all my art that I make is like, to me, a love letter to the gay community um, and to the uh, to the people of color, and not just, not just black people, but just people of color just in general, because I know how hard we have it. I think that my way of showing it hasn't always been received. It's not always the most popular things. And sometimes if you put out something, it doesn't matter how much money or time you spent on it. If people don't see it, then it doesn't exist to them. Mm. There are so many videos that I'm like, I wish people could see this and understand the message I was trying to put out. I realize that sometimes it's done in this like weird artistic way that's not as deliberate as I would like for, as people would like for it to be. But that's just the way that I like share my artistry. I want it to be done in a way that feels feels authentic to me and it hasn't really um I wouldn't say that it's been received horribly but sometimes it's not received at all if people don't see it if they haven't heard that song if they haven't seen that visual or whatever then it, it's not really benefiting my my cause sure. so I, I think that I have heard things like that before and people think that I don't ride for the gay community and I don't ride for the black community and that's just not the case. I think that my approach is just probably different than what some other people's, yeah. I think that it is powerful as a black man for me to be going into rooms with white people and saying to them like, what you're saying is not okay. This is problematic. And I don't go post online that I'm doing that because I don't think, I think that's performative. But people who know me are like, he's just not that person. But if you don't know me, then you don't know. And, and, and so I think that what I'm doing right now in this chapter of my life is trying to like take a pause because I go move so fast that I sometimes I'm not necessarily thinking about everything. And it's just me working with people and like to, to create this bigger picture. And I think that um, sometimes in my haste to get the content out, I don't necessarily dot every I and cross every T I'm not really a businessman. I am a businessman because I have to be and right. I have become a businessman and I'm proud of where I've come, but I don't enjoy those things. I enjoy writing things, choreographing, dancing. And in the beginning, I would put out posts and say, anybody who wants to come, come, come dance in this video. And it never seemed to me that it was, I, I was unaware and I can admit the fact that I was unaware that so many more white people were submitting and coming. I think the musical theater and Disney and Wizard of Oz and whatever videos that I was putting out were attracting a specific audience. Mm -hmm. And so when I would, they, we would be like, great, do we have 20 dancers? And people would be like, yeah. And when they would get there, there'd be two black dancers and 18 white dancers. And when I started seeing the comments, I'm like, okay, then we gotta start, even if they aren't organically being attracted to this video, or maybe they don't feel like there is a space for them. Maybe they don't feel like they're welcome to be in this video because they didn't see themselves enough in it. So we gotta go out and like 
reach out and do what we have to do to get extra people there to be, create more body positivity we 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 really do try to do those things but when you make 700 videos it's it's really difficult i was cranking out videos every single week and it wasn't as much thought as people probably think was going into them it's like let's do this impromptu let's shoot it tomorrow who's gonna be there okay well they're here now and that was the approach that we were going through and i didn't realize how many people were seeing them even though i was seeing the numbers it feels different than when you're going i wasn't touring mm. i was just posting videos social media wasn't the same as it right. is now so i was building this reputation but we were just in a hamster wheel being like what's next what's next what's next next week we'll do this and before i knew it i had built this like vocabulary of work that wasn't as diverse and wasn't as woke as it should have been. Even during a time where most people weren't creating content right. that was woke, I was creating a lot of content and there weren't a lot of black people in that space. So what I think the responsibility, people were like, you are the person who has this opportunity and this is the bullshit you're doing. But I wasn't seeing it like that. I was just like, this is the art that I'm creating. And I wasn't realizing I'm, it's as weird as it sounds, I, I don't feel like I'm famous. I wasn't feeling like anybody was looking up to me as their beacon of hope, as the one person who had a voice, because I felt like I wasn't doing well enough. And you know, you're always wanting more. I was seeing all these people with 10 million subscribers. I'm like, I have 1 million subscribers. Why does anybody care what I think about it, you know? That one was quick. Yeah, that was, good. That, was that was more respect. That was respect of the airline. Um, so I think that when you when you do this gradual process, like when I started doing this, you have to remember that social media influencer wasn't some word that people were right. tossing around. There weren't agents to represent us. There were Twitter was hardly even a thing. I never was on on there really. Like I, it wasn't. The world has evolved in a way that like now people look back like, how could you do this? But at that time. I didn't realize the responsibility that I was like bringing onto myself. I just knew I was having fun creating videos and I was hoping that someone would watch them. And it was like overnight almost, like these videos that had 200,000 views, I was just cranking them out and I'd go back and be like, this video has 7 million views all of a sudden. And you don't realize it because I wasn't going outside. I wasn't seeing people. I wasn't going on tour. I wasn't on the internet checking for comments right. and stuff like that. I was just, a kid living out his fucking Best little living life. paycheck to paycheck, right. broke. I was broke the whole time, just eating ramen noodles, borrowing money from people, you know, like just creating art and and not realizing the responsibility that I was getting for doing that, which I don't think, I think people are like, he are thinking he has this responsibility. Why won't he do this, you know? But that's not what it looked like from our perspective. I hope that gives you, I hope that paints some sort of picture. For, I mean, for you. I feel like it's less about, because as a, as a person who now considers themselves like a friend, like I get it, we've had these conversations. Ooh, I like these shoes, I like these shoes all day. I just couldn't say Thank you. These shoes are nice. Um, but as a person who is now like a part of like a friend group, I think that I get it. I think that these questions are more so for the people who are going to watch this, roll their eyes at both me and you, and you know. Well, what have you observed? Because I think people can listen to me say this all the whole time, but you are the reason we're here is because you're somebody who supported me, who like listened to the music, and not to make me the person conducting this interview now. But no, I mean, it's, what it's has this? Because I've never asked you this. Like, what? What? How has your perspective and perception of me changed now knowing me and getting to be a friend of mine because I think that a lot of people might be looking at you like bitch what are you doing have yeah. you lost your mind why are you in this fool's house and like I don't know honestly and you can be yeah no no I mean I'm, I know, you know you anybody be. anybody who knows me and anybody who's listening knows that I'm going to my my thought about it's a, it's a complete I don't even want to say 180, it's been like a complete 360, right? And I think it's funny because I was my next question was going to be, how do you go from a space of watching this girl say these not so nice things about you to having her in your home, right? Like, and, 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 and sharing friendship and meals and, and finances and money and, and all things with me. But I think for me, what it was was the willingness that you've always had because you don't remember but i've always remembered 
the several encounters that we've had before we got to this point. Like I said, like my first negative video was like freshman year of college when I talked about you and RuPaul and a couple of other people and how y'all don't date black men. And like, then you responded and it was like the nicest response and it was very like detailed and it was long for Instagram, especially because it wasn't, Instagram wasn't popping like that. So you didn't, oh, nobody was looking and nobody would have cared if you responded at that point. So I felt like it was genuine then. And so I kept watching because regardless of what, I was still a fan. I liked the music, I liked the videos, I was, you know, doing the things, but I kept seeing what I felt like were inconsistencies and in the apologies. It would be like, I got called out for this and I hear y'all. And then there would be another video with what seemed to be just white people, what seemed to be X, Y, and Z. And then there was also this perception that I created in my head because I didn't know you. I was like, he's one of those over pretentious ass black gay boys that think he white and da 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 da. And it was just like, then being on set with you, I was like, hmm, it's not given thinks he's white. Okay, so uh, he, he black and he know he black, mm -hmm. but now they're, okay, so the visuals are still a problem, right? Like now there comes like, there's there was even an evolution of the things that I was finding wrong, right? So it went from like, okay, I, this is who I think he is to okay, that perception has changed how and so ever he is still colorblind to the fact that these things are happening, right? And how do we have that conversation? And there were like a couple of years in between me saying different things. And I think you seeing a couple of different things addressing certain things, not addressing other things. And then finally, like the shoe dropped and you were just like, I want to talk to this girl like and I was happy about it because I was like I need to talk to him because I've had these thoughts I've had these feelings I've said them sometimes he sees them in response sometimes he hasn't but I want to be able to say once and for all whether I fuck with him or not because I'm also at a stage in my life where fundamentally I'm not fucking with things that don't serve me and that don't align with me morally spiritually whatever the fuck it is and that includes art that's why I don't bump certain artists anymore that's why I don't go to certain people's concerts and put money in certain people's pockets and so I was like, as much as I fuck with Todrick and the art that he puts out, I need to decide for real and pick a side on whether or not I'm gonna continue to put money in this man's pockets and go to these shows and, and buy this merch and all of this stuff if I don't fuck with him. And after our first conversation, which lasted for almost four hours, y'all, <laughs> legitimately, it was four hours of us going back and forth about a part, like, and, and that's the thing too that I think we're, we're missing is that as queer people and as black people sitting in the intersections of both of those, we don't like when white folks sit us down and make us explain the intersectionalities and the intricacies of who we are fundamentally as people. Yeah. And so what I realized after that conversation was there are so many of us that are asking you, demanding that you, right, explain yourself. And where, from whence you came, and from how you came, and from who you love, and how you fuck them, and how you navigate your friends, and why they all look like this, and if this were a white person badgering a black person about any of those things or intricacies specifically about our blackness, we would be in an uproar about it. And this whole experience, getting to know you, talking has changed all of that because now I can see you as a person, I've humanized you. You're not just this figure that's far away but also I understand like the nuance. It's not always going to be this, like you're not as hands-on as I thought you were. You're not as, you know, uppity and like, I don't like black people. You and thought I was uppity? Oh, I thought you were uppity as fuck, bitch. Did you? It was giving uppity. I mean, even before all of this, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all can't, if you've seen his house story, y'all know what all of this means, right? <laughs> um, but even before all of this, it was given like, I feel like you think that you are better than the rest of us because white people have stamped you and given you this approval. And that shit irks my fucking nerves. I just wanna, I don't wanna interrupt you, but I just want you to know that my life, I think that people think that I have frolicked through life and white people have been kind to me for forever. And that's, that is not the case. I struggle with white people every day and with whiteness and with the way they treat us, the things they expect us to do, every Broadway show that I've done, like the things that they expect you to be able to do, like that should that should come with you. Well, you're black, can't you right. riff? Can't right. you do this? Can't you tumble? You can't do a backflip? You know, like mm. for the same amount of money as they're gonna pay them to do, you know, whatever. And I'm not exempt. Like when I, I, I I'm black, like, and, and, 
I, I go through shit like all the time and, and, and every single day I have to fight just like every other black person has to fight to get to the point where, I, where I've gotten. And I, I think that for some reason I've given, I grew up in the theater where people are like, you don't ever show your flaws. Like it's just like you show, my, my mom always wanted us to have dignity and stuff. So I put on a good poker face and I stand up and I say like, absolutely, sure. Cause that's the world I was raised in, being a theater kid and stuff. But that's not always how I feel. But it's just I don't want to air my dirty laundry. I don't. I try, and I have before. I've had moments of weakness, but I try not to do that. But it, it has not been easy, and and I think that my like ultimately the reason why I fuck with you and why I reached out to you over and over and over again, even not realizing you were the same yeah. person is because ultimately I think every single person on this planet wants to be loved and wants to be accepted by their own tribe. And I think oftentimes as black people, when we want people to see us as like, we're not just this, we can be all of these things. But when somebody goes and does something that doesn't look like something that we recognize, oftentimes we're like, well, that's not black. And we shouldn't, you know, like, I feel that energy sometimes. I'm like, if you think I'm doing something that you don't like or you don't think represents blackness in the right way, I'm still your tribe. Mm -hmm. Like, we're only as good as we can be together. So come get me by the hand and be like, Todrick, I need you to understand that we need this from you because you have a voice that the other, uh, uh, some of us don't have, have which, should, which you might think I understood, but I did not understand. And so I didn't know. And so when people say that, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take this note and I'm gonna do with it what I can. And every time you have said something, it, it probably felt mixed with like this this smorgasbord of, of hated comments. Somebody that was in the middle of that, a diamond in the rough that was like, I love you and I want you to do better because you are us. And if, right. you, if you can do this with black excellence, with gay excellence and do this and speak for some of us who can't speak, then I need you to get this. And when I see that energy, then I'm like, I wanna to respond to that person because they can help me understand what everybody else is going through because my walk has just been different. My experience has not been the same. That's why my art doesn't look the same. I started doing ballet at eight years old. I grew up with white people. I only did theater. Black people are the only people that have ever called me faggots. Like they're the only people when I went to the barbershop, we've all experienced right. this. They, I didn't feel comfortable in that situation. When I would go to church, they would make fun of me and say stuff behind my back and I would get up to sing and they'd be like, why is he swishing his hips like this? And you know, like whatever at school, it was just like when I would go to these places where there were theater people there, it was like we could be doing the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and it didn't matter what color I was. And to me, from my specific human being, that was my safe haven. That was the place that I felt like you, if you can make it through this eight hours of school, then you're good because you can yes. go to Oz, you can go to Wonderland, yes. you can go to Narnia with these people and they don't care that you are different. They don't care that you talk like this. They're not making fun of the way you switch your hips. So it became that for me. I felt safe because I didn't feel like I had to be, pretend to be something that I wasn't. And that's what it all was. So I consumed my life in that because otherwise I would have been unhappy. I would have been unmotivated. I would have felt like I was lost, like I didn't belong anywhere. I would look at all my cousins and I would be like, I'm not like them. I don't want to play basketball. I don't want to listen to this music. I don't feel like I identify. When I look at Usher, I'm like, I don't see me in that. Mm -hmm. I don't see, I saw myself in Brandy as Cinderella. That's who mm -hmm. I saw myself. And I was like, that's not me, but that's the closest right. thing to me I can find. And so I think that as black people, we're all dealing with trauma and how we deal with that trauma, whether it be like, okay, well, I'm gonna really fucking double down and like ride for my people, even if when I go to the barbershop, I don't feel comfortable. Even if when I'm at church, I feel the most judged that I've ever felt. Even if when I'm at school, that they're, they're the ones that are coming for me. And some people are like, I'm gonna, when people would tell me like, don't trust white people, I would be so conflicted. I mean, my grandma, like may she rest in peace, would be like, you gotta be careful. My grandma Same. was a housekeeper her whole life and worked for white people and some of them were great and some of them were evil. My grandma watched people when she was working in the fields get shot for sleeping with, because the, the white man was sleeping with them. She would tell me these stories. It would terrify me of white people, but that wasn't my experience. When I felt loved, when I walked into the room, I was like, and it wasn't just the white people. There were a couple of black people there, but it was predominantly white people in the show. And that just happened to be my experience. So I don't have the relationship with whiteness 
it's it's conflicted because I have had white people be evil to me and tell me I couldn't go somewhere. I can't bring my show there. I've had white people unplug my fucking music when I was at a show opening for Andy Grammer because that was they didn't they thought my music was too secular and too gay and too like pushing the liberal agenda and i felt like i remember the jackson five movie when they let those white people win and joe jackson was like fuck that color tv like i don't want that tv we're leaving you know like i have felt that way but i've also had great experiences with with white people and and so i don't know how to navigate this this world i feel like I'm doing the best that I can. And when I meet people like you that are like, they don't wanna leave me for dust and like will take the time to talk to me, to open my eyes, to offer me a perspective I might not have seen before, to tell me things I can do differently. As long as I feel confident and it's not performative, like I'm trying to be something that I'm not because I love Saucy Santana, I love Lil Nas. If I performed those songs, it wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't feel authentic to me. My dancers would be like, bitch, what are we doing? And the people watching it would be like, okay, it's Audrey, right. you, you tried it. It's just not me. I'm a theater geek who likes to pretend I'm a bad bitch in my videos, but I'm really, <laughs> I'm really not that bad of a bitch. If you say something rude to me, I'll be like, well, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> like, I, I That's who I am and I, 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 I can't, Re reprogram what has happened to me since I was seven. Most people who are like me weren't in ballet school for their whole life, didn't do theater, weren't watching The Wizard of Oz on repeat. You know, like that's just why I just was that kid. And, it, and it's never left me. And I think when you meet me, you're like, yeah, he doesn't take this yeah. act off. Like you said something to me earlier, like, do you just run in the room and like, nigga, 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 nigga. Like, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. This is who I am. This is, and it, it maybe it is a, a product of the environment that I was in for so long, but it's not performative. If you say some play, if you play something Disney, I'm gonna get excited. Right. Like I'm gonna, it genuinely excites me. And also, that's another thing. Sometimes I've dated black men, and I'm like, bitch, you are it. Let's do this. And I'm like, I want to go see Hamilton, and they're like, what? A musical theater is such a huge part of my life. I talk about it all the time. My jokes are quotes from from shows and yeah, sound of music or something, or or the Wiz or and the hairspray. And if they're they're just like, I just think this is cheesy. I'm cheesy to them. I don't have the swag that they want me to have. Like sometimes I'm like harassing somebody that's black. That's like, please go on another date with me. And they're like, Tajik, I don't want to go to Disneyland with you anymore. I don't want to see Frozen on Broadway. <laughs> like, and. I think that my likes and dislikes, you know, like our our interests sometimes just don't line up, you know? And um and I don't smoke weed and like people are like, I I I, I smoke a bowl every night. I'm like, I don't like that being around me. I don't I've never smoked weed. I've n I hardly have ever drank. I don't know if I've ever been drunk. I didn't have sex till I was twenty five years old. Like I just am a strange person, I guess, and I feel like I'm just very, very misunderstood problematic maybe not intentionally mm -hmm. like i think that i've done a lot of things but i wish there were more people in our community like you that are like willing because you did reach out and say i would like to talk to you mm -hmm. a lot of people don't do that and i wish there was just more of this conversation because i feel like i've grown so much from just knowing you and from being in your presence and anybody who would try to shame you for talking to somebody who was one of your brothers and sisters and trying to be like i want to help him understand a perspective. Even with Justin J, like I reached out to him and said, I want to get to know you. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to come here one day and reroute the, I'm 37 years old, reroute 37 years worth of experiences right. for me. It's going to take time. Like your experience is not my experience. Okay. I'm not trying to make him be me, but he can't make me, and not that he did do that, but. Right. I think sometimes he's like, I don't understand how you don't see this. I'm like, I don't. And it might take you longer than 30 minutes to get me there. But but if we're going to do it, let's do let's it. Let's do the work. Let's do the work. It's not doing the work for you to tell me something and be frustrated 30 minutes later that I don't agree with you. Like, it's trying to help me, like, understand why certain things might be problematic, why they might be perceived this way, might, why people might think this. Because some of the things that people say, I'm like... I should not have to show you my track list and my track record of all the black men that I've slept with because it's none of your fucking business. It's not your business. Mm -hmm. And like, I also don't think that even if I had ever slept with a black person, I can't still be a huge advocate for this community, for the gay community, for black people, even if I had never, but I have. And I don't like having to talk to people about people I've had sex with. The people I've had sex with know I had sex with them. 
And right now we're living in a world where people need to feel entitled to know this. And even though I've only posted two boyfriends that I've had online, they're like, oh, he would never date somebody black. I'm like, how do you know that? And how do you have the audacity to stand up online and say that to the world in public on a video camera? Well, you don't know who I've dated. You don't know that they don't want to be outed. You don't know that they don't want to tell people who they're dating. They don't, you don't know that their family doesn't want them to know in front of 1.8 million people that they're dating me. It's none of your business. If you want me to be a better advocate for the community, then just say that. If you want to date me and you want to fuck, just say just that. Because maybe it might happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you want to say, like, hey, I'm, I'm confused, then message me and say that. But don't tell me who I am. Don't tell me who I am with, who, I, who I've been with, who I slept with. Because it, it's, it's A, false. B, it's none of your business. And C, it has nothing to do with my love and and passion that I poured into trying my best every single day to be in a great representation for black people and, I, and, and for gay people. It's very, very important to me. I, I have committed my whole life and not had a social life, not had a lot of romantic partners because a lot of people can't deal with it. I'm usually just not dating anybody. And a lot, very few people are crazy enough to deal with the like crazy jet setting life that is my existence, you know? It, it's hard, so I think I'm a work in progress, but ultimately, I just want you and anybody watching this to know, like, I want to do better. I want for people to be like, okay, I see the progress. And every now and then, it might not be perfect. I might put out a video that you're like, okay, that feels very reminiscent of a problem we had before. But, like, I want people to understand I'm doing this by myself. It's not going to be perfect. I don't know that my agenda is everyone's agenda. I don't know that right now I'm in a place, it took Beyonce a long time to get to the place where she was doing formation, to where she was being a political figure and going to marches and stuff. She was wearing blonde hair and dating white men in her videos and having white dancers for a long time before she got to this place where she was like, every song that I do, every video I create, every visual that I put out is going to be a love letter to this community. And I'm, I'm glad that she took the time that it took to get to the place where it felt authentic to her. But it has been historically a thing that like, when black people make it to a certain level from Prince to Michael Jackson, to Whitney Houston, to Nicki Minaj, to whoever, I think that we, we have to start looking at things and be like, we are a community that, you know, like I said a comment once on Twitter that got me canceled because a friend of mine who I felt was very woke said, came over here and was like, slavery worked, he said that. And so I repeated it on social media and I understand now why that was so problematic to say. And when Gay Magazine posted about it, people, some people were like, great message, wrong messenger. As if to say that if someone else had said it, they would understand where it's coming from. I understand now I shouldn't have never said, should have never said that. But what I do, like what I was meaning to say or the bigger picture of what I was meaning to say is that we have been oppressed as gay people, as black people, we were brought to this country and discouraged to learn how to read, discouraged to learn how to write, to speak the language that they wanted us to speak, to be able to get the jobs that we wanted to have. Like, white people have controlled a narrative of us for a very, very long time. And I think that this, to me, is like what is so beautiful about like what progress looks like. Because you are somebody who can say like, I don't know if I fuck with you, but because I believe in the bigger cause, I'm not gonna leave this stone unturned. I'm gonna go see what it is. Because if I would turn my back on somebody who looks like me, because I think they might be this way when I've never met them, are you really an advocate for the black community? And I think that that's a question that may not sound right coming out of my mouth, but if you're willing to turn your back on somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm not certain people that we've named before. Like, I, I, I'm not saying I'm unwilling to like work at it, to that I'm unwilling to do the work to try to be a better advocate, to learn, to like, to show in my art and stuff that I'm progressing, even if there are pitfalls and, and mistakes. I think that this is important and, and we need more of it. And if I'm a person that has the ability to affect millions of people and see millions of people, I would love to have more conversations with people like this. Than, than to have people like sending judgments and telling me who I am on the internet. And I never felt like that was the case with you. It was always like, I'm seeing this, it's giving very this, it's looking this, mm -hmm. why is it that it is this? Can someone explain this to me? And I'm like, that, 
I will entertain that conversation because I feel like you're somebody who genuinely is like, I'm reaching out to you because I want you to do better. I want to know what this is, not from a place of jealousy, not because I want to tear you down when you're a part of our community, but because I want to lift you up and I want you to help lift other people up. I don't want you to be misunderstood. I want to get down to the bottom line. I, I love our community. I think that black people and gay people are some of the most beautiful creatures that have ever been, been created. I, I hate it makes my skin crawl to see like white people being success successful off of the backs of like something that we have created even if sometimes i have been a person to perpetuate that or uplift that that was never my goal or intention and sometimes i need people to explain that to me because we can all become complacent and see things so many times that it becomes normal to us and sometimes you need people to remind you like that's not that's not okay and this is why it's not okay and I'm down to be educated. I'm not, I'm man enough to be like, bitch, I'm, I have been wrong several times. I'm gonna be wrong again, but I love being a part of this community. I'm never gonna stop loving this community and my, my people just in general. And I, I want to feel loved back. I wanna feel like I can walk into a room and people understand that, you know, I would love to be on Legendary. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm a person who's a big part of the gay community. I think that show is iconic. I, I have tried to like not use the word shablam anymore. I, I I am, you know, like when I see things, I'm like, okay, great. I didn't know that. My bad. I've heard that word used. I've heard, yeah. you know, like. But I mean, you literally address that in music. It's like, we don't shablam because we dip, dip. dip. Yeah. <laughs> I am trying to, yeah. do, but it, sometimes it doesn't seem like it's enough, but I just want people to know I'm trying. And if you see me on the street and you have something to say to me, come up to me, talk to me. But I will talk to you. I'm not what people are like. I'm not a bougie bitch. It's like, um, no. It's not giving that. It's it not does, giving it, that. And, and it doesn't, if you've ever met, like the times that we've been out and we've gone out, he speaks to everybody. Even the people who are like, even when he sees people who are like shy and like we're like walking by and folks are like, I think I want it. He's like, hey. They're like, you know, like you you're the person that's like, you're not the the person that's trying to avoid the fans or like avoid the eye contact or the, or even the the com the weird conversation like even you know as we were walking through WeHo Pride like there were a couple of groups of people that like we could tell it was like I know who you are but also I don't like who you are and you were still just kind of like hey and then and then it would flip like the, hey like you know like yeah. it's, it's it's just it's interesting and so. The thing that is interesting to me, though, is that we, we've been having a lot of conversation today and we haven't talked, on, talked about the thing that, you know, everybody's talking about, which is mental health. And so are there moments of depression for you and how do you navigate that? I think when you're raised in the environment that I was raised in, sometimes you don't even let yourself get to the point where you acknowledge the depression. I think as black men, sometimes we're told to like toughen up. And I think sometimes when I get to that place where I'm like, I'm about to be depressed, I'm, I can hear the men in my family being like, toughen up, don't be a pussy, don't be a little bitch, you know? Like, mm -hmm. And so I do that, but it 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 is it weighs on me every day. Like. I, I I would never be doing this, sacrificing my life to do this if I didn't love my people. And like, I have been broke for so long and like given up everything, didn't have a car, didn't have a place to live, but because I was like, I want to be a beacon of hope and light for this community. But yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard when you are representing a community and you feel like the gay community or the black community is like, I don't want him to represent me. When I get these opportunities, I'm like, I, I, I want to be the best representation that I possibly can be, but I don't know how to do that. And I don't think that me dating a person that is a certain race or me having whatever is the thing that is going to make me be a great representation or not. I don't think that that should be the sole deciding factor. And for a lot of people, that is at the top of their list of things. They're like, he doesn't date black people. I just want to let you all know that's not the case. So I just want that to be stricken from the record. Um, I date everybody. I just want to be in love. You know, like that's just it for me. And um, so but it, but it, it, it's hard. It, it's hard to have millions of people telling you who you are when you know it's not and deciding at what point you address it and defend yourself against people who are strangers to you. You don't know them. So it's like, do I owe this person that's saying this about me who clearly doesn't like me an explanation about who it is I am dating and who it is or isn't that I am fucking? That's an, it's, it's another business. But at this point, 
people feel entitled to know and and, and and they're gonna make a judgment on whether or not they think you're a good person. Based off of what you're willing to share. So now here I am talking about things I thought I would never be talking about, but if this is what it takes for people to be like, okay, I, he's a human to me, mm. because I feel like I've always been a human, but I've realized from talking to people like you that you're like, you weren't really that human and we don't really know. And I did think you're bougie. I didn't think you would speak because I didn't think you fucked with black people. I don't think that you ride that hard for the gay community. I do think that you will do anything for a coin. I do think that you will lick a white person's ass to get ahead and be whatever. I'm like, that's not who I am, you know? And, and I, and, and I and it's now time for me to start like talking to people so that they hear it from my mouth. Whether they receive it or not is not my business anymore. I can't control that, but I can talk to each person that I meet if they want to talk to me about it and say and answer whatever questions they would want me to answer. But I'm not gonna release a video of me having sex with somebody to prove to them that I that I did it. It's not. It's not, it's just I'm never gonna do that. So. I think that um, I just have to try to have dignity and try to put one foot in front of the other every single day. Try to be the best version of myself that I can be. That's literally all I can do, you know? And keep taking opportunities like this because this scares me. Like the first half of the interview, I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't even know how to answer this question because it's such a big question that you're asking and such a it feels intrusive to ask somebody that it feels like why would you ask somebody black do you do you but, like being black right it's like but you have to when, when when the conversation is solely about because the issue isn't if Todrick is talented it's that's never the issue the issue and even with the haters like I've never heard or I I personally have never seen or heard a hater say anything about your talent it's always about who you are as a person and who we believe you to be and how you represent either your blackness or your queerness or somewhere in the middle of both. But that's why like, I think that the mental health portion is like a thing because like, what does depression look like for you? Because it doesn't even, like even in talking through that, I feel like you talked yourself through. How I would talk myself out of being depressed. Yes. I just know that if I get to that place, like when I go to my shows and I see the people, the thousands of people in the theater that are like, I'm alive because you wrote this song and because I felt like there was hope because of this one video, which I know some people like roll their eyes and like, really? But like, there have been people that don't even realize that some small thing that they did when I was a kid, like Raven Simone was that for me. Like Raven Simone was the reason why I wanted to act. And like, I would go home every day after being bullied at school and be like, I get to watch that so Raven. And she would be the person that brought me out of that dark place and made me laugh and made me forget about the drama that I went through at school. So when I met her, it wasn't just like, oh, I like you and I wanna take a picture. It was like, you hold a very specific, special place in my heart. And like, Beyonce is that for me too. When I met her, I just was like, the fact that you are, that you have, seen what I'm doing and put it out there for millions of people to see was the the week that I was deciding whether or not I was going to pack my bags and go back to Texas. You don't even realize that part of the reason why I'm here is because Beyonce, before it was cool for people to be recognizing social media influencers, True. she was like, this boy has made this video and done something that would be so difficult to do. You need to go support him. And, um, and so I think that like, in those moments, that is what pulls me out of that place because I do realize that there are so many people who are looking to me to be a beacon of hope and a light. And um, and and this is all I know. This is what I love. I, I don't, I can't imagine a world where I wasn't creating and I'm never gonna stop doing it. But if I'm gonna do it, then I would rather do something that is gonna let people know that like, I'm here for them. And it might not look, my artistry might not look the way they want it to look but I am hearing what they're saying and I'm gonna try to, in my own way, take what they're saying and apply it to the art that I'm creating. And I think that that's it and that's all. Like that, I don't want to, my goal wasn't to get this super long form response and have people sit here for two hours and dissect and think and, and do all of the things. My goal was to get people to get a little glimpse of what I now feel like I get on a regular basis. And I get a human being that's like struggling with the same shit I struggle with. Like, how are these people gonna perceive this messaging? How are people gonna feel about this? Like, 
this thing happened to me today and it has nothing to do with fucking social media but i feel bad and i just want to talk to somebody about it and i want to scream and this thing at work like regardless of what the work is like this thing at work fell through and i just want one of my friends to listen to me vent about that yeah. shit you know what i'm saying and um if after like my goal also with this isn't to change anybody's mind yeah it's not to say like oh now that i'm friends with todrick y'all all be friends with Todrick. like i got forty three thousand fucking followers it ain't shit that i can do with you know like changing the millions of y'all that probably follow this man just to 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 say mean and hateful and harmful things but the words that you say in the forty three thousand people who follow you are very engaged and they hang on sometimes your every word because you are a very powerful impactful person who has a lot of insight in the way that you eloquently like display your intellect and say things in a way that people can understand is really important i wouldn't be sitting down talking to you if i just were like oh this is she cool you know like right i do think that your opinion like holds a lot of weight on a lot of people and you have also dedicated a lot of your life and a lot of your privacy to be able to be an advocate and a mouthpiece for a lot of people who don't have forty three thousand people following them forty three thousand people is a lot of people if you put forty three thousand people in a room you can make a lot of change happen with that so not that you are like diminishing your success but it is what you have done is really really difficult to do to get forty three thousand people to follow you is is how many people in the world what percentage of the world can say that they have been able to do that and you're just getting started you know um but i i don't think that you're going to change people's minds but i do think that humanizing somebody and like having somebody sit down i don't do this very often it scares me this is being vulnerable and not that i was a theater kid like i play characters on right. stage and like to when people ask me questions like this it makes me uncomfortable and it makes it, but i think that uncomfortability like maybe some people are gonna be like he looks uncomfortable but i can tell that or maybe they're gonna be like this is bullshit man i don't fuck right. with him like, knows? I, the fuck knows? <laughs> some people might have been like i kind of liked him before this interview and now i really, don't, now fuck I really with don't fuck with it but, but i think some people might be like i get where he's come from my experience has just been wild. Like, I don't know very many black men who started doing ballet at eight years old for whatever reason and started doing theater their whole life and went to a school with mostly white people. I think that that experience has shaped me to be from my experience on this planet. I think the butterfly effect is real. What you experience in your life definitely helps shape the person that you become, you know? Like, it's been scientifically proven. And I can't go back and be eight years old again and not go to that school and I can't this is this this is the person that I am right now but I can try my hardest to like understand what it is that I'm doing because I want to be a person that black people can look up to and be like he's in his own way moving the needle in the right direction it can't always look the same way like black people are so diverse we're so vast we can do so many things and I, I want to be somebody that people say like, I might not necessarily have liked the way he got to this point, but I'm glad that he got, got here. Yeah. That he got here. And I still think him existing is important for our community. I do think that there are other black kids that are in theater and stuff that might not necessarily look up to right. a Chris Brown or a, or who is gay and black, uh, Lil Nas, right. Saucy Santana. Saucy Santana. Like, right. um, there has to be somebody for everybody. Yeah, and, and not, there might be a right. theater kid that's like, I don't see myself in that, but I do see myself in Todrick. So maybe I'm the person that can help that person embrace their blackness, which is sometimes difficult to do. Like, you know, like when you're going up. It's a thing, like, but I feel like- It's that, a journey like, for people and it's, here. yeah. And um, I also love that you are a theater girl. So sometimes when I'm saying things, you're like, I've been that girl and I understand that. <laughs> um, and you've probably been the only black person in certain in rooms. Room, in the audition, at the play, like in the fucking theater conference of Florida. Like and, there's a bunch of spaces where I have been that only person. And there's a bunch of times where I didn't see myself represented. Like people ask what inspired me to be here? How did I get into this? And it's because I didn't see other black trans women having the conversations that I wanted to have. Yeah. I love Madison. Madison is my auntie, love it to death. But the messaging that she was putting out at the time was not messaging that I thought was a good reflection of black trans women. I love Amaya Scott, but Amaya is a pretty girl. She slays. She doesn't give us, you know, the the ins and outs. She's not giving us, you know, political, you know, conversation and commentary. 
at the time there was no Laverne like she was just coming out like when I was having these thoughts Janet was just deciding to be open about being trans so all I was seeing was the T.S. Madison the Amayas the Shauna Brooks and like those women are amazing and they're beautiful and they're great but they're different but they're different and that's fine but I, I, I want us to get out of this narrative that we're like if it's different if it doesn't look like this then it's then it's then not it's for us. Yeah. It's not black. It's not you know because I think sometimes not everybody feels that way, but there are sometimes people are like if the, if he doesn't express his blackness in this way, if he posts a picture with this person, he's probably looking up with them. If he's dated two white people that we know of, that's probably all he dates. Like I don't think we should make those assumptions. And even people who are in those categories, even people who are black who only date white people, I feel like they are probably experiencing some sort of trauma that we should at least give them the benefit of the doubt to express to us how they got to that spot and we shouldn't turn our backs on them just because that is what they have chosen to do or who they have chosen to be to date or who they are attracted to for whatever reasons by society standards have manipulated them into thinking that that is the only beauty that exists they're still a part of our community and we still need to try to like not feel betrayed by the fact that they like these people but try to understand where they're coming from and how have conversations with them to maybe instead of ostracizing them, try to make them understand why it is that they don't find beauty in being black. Because I do think that that is a thing that a lot of people struggle with. There's a reason why people are making shirts that say black is beautiful. The world has tried to convince us for a long time that we're not beautiful. And some people that translates in different ways. And we need to embrace everybody and be like, we, we need to, if, if they are willing to have the conversation, if they're not, then let them do their own thing. But if somebody's willing to have the conversation, I think we need to like- Be willing to- To be willing to have hear, it. Right, hear them out. At least once. At least once. At least once. And um, you're you're one of the first times I've had this conversation. And while it was scary for me, it, it feels like therapy to like be able to say some of these things. I'm sorry that it's long-winded and I hope you cut it down. I'm not gonna but... let somebody chat. Y'all ain't gonna have to sit through all of it. Unless you're on Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I get it. And I also want to say a shout out to Gay Magazine because you, I feel don't like... Don't you love them? I love I them. I think that they, to me, have like done what I what I, I want to see more of. And even that Grape Juice like has been like, we're going to post Todrick stuff. Gay Magazine is going to post this because they're like, maybe he is somebody that everybody doesn't see eye to eye about, but he is a part of our community. He's and doing... we're not going to act like he doesn't We're exist. not going to act like he doesn't exist because that's not like... To me, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that being being a woke activist for the black community means that you like accept and embrace blackness in all its shapes and forms with all its flaws like with anything that is, maybe is not like in society right now cool or whatever like you're still like he's a part of our community and we're not gonna just act like he ain't here you know yeah. even if he's done some things we find questionable and so i appreciate that yeah. gay magazine Whoever's running the social media and putting it up there, I see that. I see the comments that sometimes aren't great, but I appreciate the ones that are. And I feel like even just me being on there makes me feel like included. Because sometimes I'm like, I want to be invited to black events. And I'm not invited to them. I would show up. I'm not not black. Like I am black 100%. I'm not biracial. Like as far <laughs> as I know, like I am black. Be black, black, black. Even if I don't talk like it. Even if people don't think that I am. And I feel like. If I'm being honest, like I got chills the first time I saw them post me on their social media because I, I think everybody who exists on this planet wants to be accepted and embraced by their, by their own people. By their people. And sometimes it's hard to keep pushing forward when you feel like the only people that aren't fucking with you are, are black people, people like you. Yeah. and gay people. Yeah. That's hard. But um and sometimes I think the messaging that people are wanting to get to me is missed because they're like this is who you are and this is what you stand for and you don't like us. And I'm like, that's not the case. That's not, that's not it. I just, my experience has been different, but talk to me, bring me in. Like I'm willing to talk to you, but it's gotta, we gotta meet in the middle and have this discussion so that we can move forward and um, do better. So I love Gay Magazine. I love that great juice. I love you for like taking the time to sit with me. And I hope that people don't say negative thing and if they do if I, they i'm do, glad that you're willing to still have this yeah. conversation because a lot of people fuck with me when the internet is not on in my dms but i think a lot of people would be like nervous to do this interview because they're like he 
could be considered somebody who's a polarizing figure in the black community and a lot of people he's misunderstood we don't understand where he stands he hasn't told us where he stands so if you go talk to him that means that you don't know where you stand and this shouldn't have a reflection on your blackness where you are wokeness this is you being mature this is black people having conversations about i don't understand why you're there help me understand it and um i want there i just want there to be more of this i want for our last thing because i don't know how much better we're gonna but i want to give you an opportunity to pop your shit and i say that what you mean by pop your, pop shit? your shit because we we've, we've talked through the things right people are gonna feel how they how they feel they're gonna listen they're not gonna listen they're gonna turn it off they're gonna turn it back on they're gonna listen twice whatever the case may be but regardless of what, you are still an extremely successful black gay man in a space, in a world that is changing, but that still has people like Lil Boosie and all of these other rappers and T.I. and all these folks saying that men like you should not exist and that, you know, in a space where Jocelyn Hernandez gets to say that Lil Nas X is a bad influence for children while also showing her boobs to everybody in a Miami strip club, you know, just pro bono, it doesn't make sense to me. And so I want to give you space to pop your shit. And, and, and what, what does it look like when Todrick finally addresses the people that he never addresses or gives space to? And if you could just say or throw the tiniest piece of shade, like, bitch, at, in no particular direction, at no particular person, what, 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 what's the comment? Like, if you had to come up with that line in a song that you knew would be everybody's caption, Cause you're good with that. I really honestly don't know what I would say. Mm. I'm really good at being in the studio being like, what would I say would if I, say? I really thought I was a bad bitch? But it's all a facade. It's a facade. <laughs> it was a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. It was all a lie. I'm going to insert that gift somewhere up in this video. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. Love she lied. Lie. It's a lie. No, I really don't feel like I'm, I, I, I mean, I just, if I'm being honest, like, I, I really don't know what I would say. Like, I struggle, like, every day with, like, I don't think that I'm, like, the most beautiful person. I struggle with, like, body image and and with my voice. Like, I don't sometimes think I'm that talented of a singer. I wish that I was, like, that I compare myself to people who are better singers than me. And, like, I, I'm... People sometimes are tearing me down because they think that I think I'm the shit, and I'm like, I'm already tearing myself down. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> like, sometimes people say shit, and I'm like... I kind of agree with that. Or I sometimes agree. they be dragging the fuck out of me, and I'm like, that was kind of funny. That's funny, right? Was right. Really read. Um, so I really don't know what I would say, and, to, and to, I really don't know what I would say. I wish that I had something to say to respond to that, but ultimately, I just like, I think that like, if people were in this position, they would understand how hard it is. Like, it's a very, very hard cost to bear. It, it's just hard, and like. I, a lot of people can't do it. Mm. I would just say that if, if, if you think that you are somebody who, that's what I would say. People always say that if I was him, I would do this. Well, Let's then be it. me, then be do, it. do it. If you think that I'm not doing something the way that you want to do it, write your own song, choreograph your own video, produce it, come out here, be willing to risk every single dollar that you have to make videos and make the videos that you think when people get mad at somebody for not doing something, I'm like, they're open up an oh. opportunity, a window for you to do it. Whatever do you see, it. that space is missing, go do it. I also don't like when people like compare me to Lil Nas X or to whoever. No one has compared me to Saucy Santana, who right. I'm obsessed with, by the way. And right. Love and just think that Saucy is just incredible. But like, I, I'm not gonna let people like put me against other black queer artists because I've been doing this for a long time and I think there's space for everybody and we always like operate from a place of lack. So like, mm -hmm. there's enough of this pie to go around for everybody. I'm not, not you're not not existing because I exist. We can both exist together. And if I see you doing some dope shit, I'll repost it. I want there to be 20 successful gay black artists that are all doing their thing. I don't believe that there there's enough space on a iPhone or Samsung flip phone, honey, to, to have everybody's music so like, that you don't have to choose, you know? I think that's one thing I love about all these female rappers being out. When it was just Cardi and Nicki, people were like, you gotta pick a side, but now but that now there's Sweetie and Lotto and right, Cardi and Meg people. and Doja and 
Lizzo, mm -hmm. like everybody's like, oh, we can all we can exist. Listen. And I'm just glad that it's gotten to this point where people don't have to feel like they have to compete with this one other person. Like I wanted to get to that place. Like I would be honored to like be a part of anything that li that Lotto or uh, Saucy, I don't know, I just said Lotto, like okay. they're part of the queer community, but um, but Saucy or Na Lil Nas, like I would love to be a part of anything that they had to create. I'm not gonna like, entertain people like putting us against each other we do very very different things and i'm obsessed with all of Nas's videos mm -hmm. and performances i think he's a marketing genius and i'm not i just don't want to even entertain that thought like i'm not gonna let people put us against each other there was a meme that people were like trying to be mean being like lil Nas is who Todrick called thinks that he is i'm like I'm not even in that lane. I think I want to be a Broadway star. Right, you know, like, right. I'm like, Lil Nas can have that lane. Like, I love it. We're not doing the same music, you know? And I think that he's incredible. I think he's so handsome. I think he's sexy. I think his he's doing things that I wish that I was brave enough to do and saying things mm -hmm. and child. I would I would run afraid. If Lil Boozy was saying things like that to me, I would be, like, probably mm -hmm. afraid. I'm like, I don't want the confrontation. I love that he's like... Bitch, I'm come collaborating at me. with you know like right, come at me bitch. I love it. Me. Like yes. that's not me. I love I love being I follow him. I love watching it and I, I hope I get to go to the concert. I have dancers that dance with him. Like we share dancers that are paid. Um <laughs> and yeah, I just say I I'm not gonna I, I don't I'm not subscribing to that. I'm not playing any energy into that. I know I literally just dodged your whole question. You didn't dodge it. To what, pop shit. what like, I am going to fucking say, I'm gonna pop the shit for you. Okay. Bitch, I'm still not sleeping on it. If it's not a custom Louis Bay, bitch, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I mean, unless you have a custom Louis Vuitton trunk bed in your room, you don't get to talk shit to somebody. Like you just you don't get to talk shit unless one of your costumes costs twenty five one cost $25,000 for a video bitch you don't get to we, hit holler at me when you can tell mm -hmm. right when you can tell people that the entire motherfucking budget for your dancers is somebody's salary not you know uh, some one person's bitch one person what what I pay my dancers is is an entire group of people's salary I bitch. think that's been enough that's quite enough okay are, are you done <laughs> I'm, I'm done I'm so because I can, I can go on I can go on you came on the bus us, by the way, uh, Hope came to see the concert yes. and she came on the bus for the night and yes. you got to meet the dancers and see the process in real everybody life. Everybody is happy, child. Everybody is, uh, as far as I know, everybody is happy and everybody is paid and nobody has a reason to lie to me about whatever because uh, as far as they knew, I was, you know, a regular old stranger person that they could have been to and everybody seemed to love their job. Everybody seemed to really like love each other and support one another. Um, and even the dancers that, like, I remember one of the dancers, y'all were praising her because she didn't have a lot of numbers, but she was just so happy to be there and mm -hmm. just like enthusiastic about helping everybody. And you don't do that when you're not happy with your work environment. Yeah. So, you know, as far as that, like, let's put that to rest and just say thank you for yeah. doing this again. Cause this is my second time doing this, y'all. But doing this again and like having this conversation and continuously exposing yourself in a way that feels see, see. I, oh sorry. See, see. I love you. Mm. I love you I love so you much. Too. I really do. And I'm enjoying this friendship that we're getting. I'm enjoying like learning from you and soaking up your energy. I think you're an incredible human being. I think a lot of people would be like, I'm not having the interview with him. And to me, if you're trying to be an advocate for the community, if you're trying to be a social okay. media influencer, this is what it should be. Like, and I think you're doing it right. And I, I hope that everybody is like supporting you. Like, I, I just want to see, see your star shine so much because you are just such an incredible human being. Like, and your energy and your light that you bring into the room is just incredible. I'm I'm happy that I was making mistakes because it has brought us together. To I'm, be honest. Look, I'm I'm here for it. I'm happy I was winning the call. And thank y'all for watching this. I know that I'm uh, I am long winded and I think I'm just so passionate about this and this feels like a therapy session I probably should have had like five years ago. So I appreciate you all listening. Um to this and uh, I appreciate the support. Every time Gay Magazine posts something or you post something, mm -hmm. there are people in there that are like, you know what, I appreciate him for doing this. And there w are always people that are like defending me and I don't need you to do that, but I appreciate being seen and seeing some people being willing to go against the grain and be like, y'all, this boy is one of us. And maybe he doesn't, you don't like his artistry, but 
I have not committed any crimes, you know, like, you ain't killing nobody. I have not killed anybody. I'm not, I'm that not, no I'm out making art and, um, it might not be for everybody, but, um, I, I appreciate those of you who have supported me in any way, shape or form, even if you have no, are no longer supporting me and you did in the past, or you are going to start back now. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the people who came to the tour because your girl was having a really rough year. This has been the most difficult year for me with social media and stuff. And it has meant the world to me to like have people support and to feel like there are certain people who are like i i still Definitely. see you and i'm i'm here with you because everybody can ride with you when things are going great but the people that mean the most to me are the people who are willing to go and be like i still ride with you even though you're I in don't a agree with that or, or even though you're in a place, place. where it's, yeah. you know, it's not popular to ride with yeah. you right now i think that's when you really know when people are like really there for you and um I just, I appreciate you so much and I would do the same. It's reciprocated and I do feel like we are friends now and I, I'm going to ride for you. If I ever heard somebody saying something bad about you, I will be like, you're not going to talk about Hope Giselle while I'm in the room. I might call you and be like, well, bitch, bitch what is this? So not what happened. But um, <laughs> I appreciate that. I love you. I love you too. And I love y'all. We love y'all. Stay yeah. blessed. Like I say this time and every time, y'all, peace, love, and hope. And I will catch y'all next week. Bye, everybody. Mwah.